Welcome to the Guitar Breakdown, a review series of factory-made acoustic guitars designed to help make you a more informed consumer. Like most reviews, we'll of course discuss the guitar's features and tell you how it plays and sounds, but we don't stop there. We'll then run the guitar through a series of tests designed to help simulate some, shall we say, less than desirable situations to see how it holds up to just about any lifestyle. We'll then crack the guitar open to see if the manufacturers are putting as much care into the construction of the guitar as they are into trying to sell it to you. All of this is done by a master luthier who understands what goes into making a quality instrument. At the end of the video, we'll give the guitar a final breakdown score to see how it stacks up against the competition. You work hard for your money, let us help you spend it wisely. Okay, folks, we have a special treat for you today. This has been, uh, I think, probably one of our biggest requested guitar brands, and that is an Orangewood. And I think I know why. A big part of that is because you can't go to a local music store and try out an Orangewood. This company is something that's been recently popping up in the last few years, and it's kind of a, a concept that we're seeing more and more of, and that is you go to their website, you pick out your guitar and you order it and it gets shipped directly from them. Um, part of the breakdown series that we never include is that customer service side of it. And I do want to make a quick note on that um, because we are dealing directly with the manufacturer. And when Matt and I ordered this guitar, uh, we promptly received text messages from them to let them know that we're packing up your guitar. We were sent text messages to let us know that it was in transit. And then once it showed up, we got a big like congratulatory uh, email and a text. And we have continued to this day to get not annoyingly uh, just some emails and texts to kind of say, hey, here's some tips on how to take care of your instrument. So on that front, I will say the uh, the limited amount of customer service that we've needed has been fantastic. And so big kudos to them for that. Um, the guitar that we actually purchased, uh, we were looking for something in the their solid wood department. And we went with the Ava Torrified Spruce, which at the time when we, we bought the guitar was 1050 dollars American. It is on sale right now for about 850 so it's a really great price point, I think. And, and it puts it right there in that mid-level, the intermediate level of guitars, and we're going to be judging on guitars in that price range, like the Gibson G45 and things like that. Um, but so we'll get into the features of the guitar. And as the name of the instrument, the Ava Torrified Spruce, implies, is that it's a Torrified Spruce top. And uh, as you can see, that's what it looks like. The, uh, for those of you that don't know what Torrified is, it is a process of uh, basically a really layman's version, because it's a whole video in itself, is it is basically um, is dried out at a higher temperature, which simulates an aging process of the wood and makes it kind of uh, tonally different, and in some cases can make the wood feel almost older than it is. But we're not gonna get into all the details of it, but it is usually something that is seen on um, premium guitars, and for the price point, it's not something we normally see. The, it is bound in a herringbone all around the top of the guitar, as well as the rosette, and it even has herringbone down here on where the end graft would be on the guitar, uh, and on the back as well. And then the rest of the instrument is bound in a nice cream, uh, creamy white plastic. It also has an ebony, a real solid ebony fingerboard, as well as an ebony bridge and ebony bridge pins. Um, it has that Tusk brand um, nut and saddle on the guitar, which is just a, 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 um, a kind of a, a a trademarked name for almost like a Korean countertop material. It's better than plastic, not quite as good as bone in most cases. And then the fingerboard itself is actually inlaid, the fret marks with real mother of pearl. Uh, a lot of times, even at this price point, you're still seeing that kind of mother of toilet seat, uh, that fake mother of pearl plastic. But in this case, it's actually the real thing. And uh, it actually comes with, in this particular case, the, uh, the Ava Torrified Spruce Live, the live designation comes from the fact that it actually comes with an LR Bags Anthem pickup system on the guitar, which is my favorite pickup system. 
And so if you combine all of those things together um, for even even if it was $1,500, but it's not, it's 1,050 and on sale for 850 right now, I think it has a lot of features. We're not gonna do um, a sound of the actual pickup on this guitar because a lot of the instruments that we review in the breakdown series don't come with pickups. But I do wanna say that this pickup is a very high quality pickup and it alone can cost anywhere between 250 and $350 depending on where you live. So I think that the pickup alone is just a big sell sales point for me. Okay, we need to talk about the hardware that comes with this guitar. And in this case, it has these really beautiful Grover open back tuning machines on here, which gives it kind of more of that old fashioned look, you know, your, your vintage guitars, a lot of the high end Martins and stuff come with open back tuning machines. On those Martins, you'll tend to see um, Waverly tuning machines, which are to me some of the best American made tuning machines that are out there. In this case, these are Grovers, which have a tendency to be uh, quite a bit less expensive, but in this case, they may be less expensive, but they feel very nice. They have a little bit more of a, a mechanical feel to them than you would find on a Waverly, uh, but they still feel very good, and they're holding a tune very nicely, and there's, the thing I always look for on a tuning machine is that there's no slop, so that when you turn it, there's like a, a dead spot where it's not actually doing anything, and in this case, these actually don't have that. They feel very, very nice. They are chrome, and they match the strap button that is here on the neck, and on the end, we have that, that typical LR Bags look um, strap button down here. It is a bronze color. And I know for some people might think, why don't they ship it with a matching button down here that matches the button up here? But the odd thing about LR Bags pickups is that they actually use a different type of threading. It's not the standard kind that you would find, so you can't just swap this out for a gold one or a chrome one. So you're stuck with the bronze one, um, but it doesn't bother me. I think it actually looks nicely, and it also lets you know that it's a real LR Bags pickup system. It's not some, uh, you know, LR Bags is licensing their name for the pickup system and making a cheaper version for Orangewood. This is like the straight up one that you would buy if you bought it directly from LR Bags. But that does it for the hardware. All right, the next thing we need to talk about is the playability of the Ava Torfide Spruce. Keep in mind here that this is a unique situation where, in theory, we're receiving this guitar directly from the manufacturer, Orangewood and they're mailing it to you right at home. So we don't have any excuses here uh, if it doesn't play well of saying, well, maybe um, the music store we bought it from didn't store it correctly or they didn't do a good setup on it. Um, this is kind of like the best case scenario where we can judge the manufacturer for how do they send the guitar out the door. And in this case, um, it's really dialed in and I was really surprised. I kind of expected it to not be as good as it is. Um, action at the 12th fret, is two and a quarter millimeters from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. And that's on the low E and on the high E, it's only 1.75 millimeters. Um, that's pretty much where I would dial in a guitar if somebody were to bring it to me and go, hey, can you set this up for me? Um, and uh, it just feels really, really nice. The cool thing that I also noticed too, this isn't advertised, but on this guitar is that it's the exact same thickness here at the first fret as it is all the way going down to about the 11th uh, 10th or 11th fret, and that just makes for a really fast neck. It is advertised as having a 44 millimeter wide neck here at the nut. That's basically that one and the three quarter inch scale length that we're used to, or um, nut width that we're used to. As far as scale length is concerned, this is kind of cool. It's actually 25 and a half inches. I know we're switching back and forth here from metric to imperial, but this is just the numbers. <laughs> it is 25 and a half inches from the nut to the saddle and that is what our scale length is. So for those of you that are playing on Fenders a lot of the time, like a Fender Strat, Telecaster, things like that, it's the exact same scale length. Now, if you're used to Gibson guitars, this scale length might feel really, really long to you. And for people who are used to playing on Martins and Taylors, the scale length is just a kiss longer. Um, I really like it. I don't find that I'm just, you know, that I'm that it feels weird to me. Uh, a lot of times with longer scale lengths, what you end up with is kind of uh, a stiffer feeling string because it takes more stretch on that string to achieve the same to achieve the same note. But I don't think this guitar feels that way. Overall, the playability on this guitar is really, really good, and uh, I have to give high marks to Orangewood for the way that they sent this guitar out the door. Um, and we're gonna find out more as we kind of do uh, our string tension test on the guitar. But 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 uh, out of the box, I'm really pleased with it. All right, a lot of you guys are probably wondering what does this guitar sound like, and you rightfully should. And that's the thing about these guitars is uh, you can't go to your local music store and play on it and say, how does it sound? How does it compare to the other guitars? So that's what we're gonna do here. And before we get into it, as always, we are capturing all of this with our Zoom H6 recorder. 
And using the XY microphone, we're about six inches, maybe eight inches from the sound hole. We're not gonna do any post-processing on it whatsoever, so no compression, no EQ, no reverb. Um, if you want the most accurate representation of what it sounds like on your end, because this is difficult to convey through the interwebs, um, put on a nice set of headphones or use some high quality speakers. Don't just trust the speaker on your, your laptop or your cell phone because those tend to make things sound really tinny and you can't trust them. Um, so yeah, with that, uh, what we'll do is we'll start with where we always start, which is by playing just cowboy chords and working our all the way through back to the beginning again, and then you can get a sense of what it sounds like. So we'll do that here. So there's that. Uh, another note is that right before we started shooting this sequence, I did tune this guitar and it blew my mind, um, this part about it, is I use a really high-end Peterson strobe tuner. So it's not just some clip-on snark. This thing really knows whether a guitar is in tune or not. And I checked the intonation on this guitar and between the open position and the fretted position at the 12th fret, not a single string was more than one cent off, and that is a really high marks to that, especially for a guitar that's shipped directly from the manufacturer. And a big part of that, I think, comes from the fact that it is dialed in, the setup on the guitar is dialed in so well, you're not really having to crank down on those strings. Um, so it's not really necessarily a part of the sound, but it is part of the sound, uh, so I wanted to mention that. If, if you have uh, concerns about intonation, this guitar, at least this particular one, has no intonation issues whatsoever. Um, so the next thing we'll do is I'm going to play a couple of songs, and they're the same songs I play on all of these videos. Um, we do that so that you guys can look at those other videos and compare them and see if you think one sounds better than the other. So we'll do that here. flat picking. It's not my finest work, but <laughs> um, so what are my thoughts? Um, Matt and I were super excited to get this guitar. When it first came in, we pulled it out of the case and we looked at it and we went, wow, this thing seems like it's really well built. It looks nice. The the the, uh, the craftsmanship on it seems like it's pretty top notch, especially for the thousand dollar price range. And uh, as soon as I strummed it, I was like so deflated because it just doesn't sound good in my opinion. Um, Remember, this isn't all solid wood guitar. It has the mahogany back and sides, mahogany neck, and a torfied Sitka spruce top. I'm giving it generalities here, but usually with that type of wood combination, we should hear a very open and uh, kind of a woody tone. It's not gonna have a lot of bass, but it should definitely have that woody kind of a uh, crispiness to it that you would expect from those tone woods. And man, it doesn't have that at all. And my analysis of that prior to us cutting this guitar open and seeing what the bracing looks like is that it's way too overbuilt. Um, and that's pretty typical of factory made guitars, but in this case, I'd say even more so. And I don't know why they feel the need to make the guitar so beefy. Um, we actually are going to be measuring the thickness of this top, and I suspect that it is quite a bit thicker than it needs to be. And just by looking through the sound hole, I can tell you that I think that those braces are really, really, really too thick. And just by doing the old deflection test, by pushing on the top of this guitar, I think I could stand on top of this thing. I'm telling you, it is just really too over, too overbuilt. 
um, as a guitar builder, you start to get this intuitive sense of like how much you, when you just by pushing on the top, you can, you can get a sense of how much you expect it to flex. Um, and this guitar just doesn't flex whatsoever. And that's how we end up with the sound that this guitar has. And what you end up with, I feel like, is the high E, the B, and the G string. They sound pretty decent, they cut through well. But anything lower than that, once you get down to the D, the A, and the E string, there's nothing there, especially on this low E string. It just feels very, uh, I don't know, like rubbery almost, that low E string. Um, these are brand new strings. They're the Ernie Ball um, Phosphor Bronze Medium Gauge Strings. Uh, and they just, they don't sound like new strings. Um, whereas if we get up on the, um, um, on the higher strings. Even that, even the strumming an open G chord. To me, the notes that stand out are those unwound high strings. Um, and like I said, I think that a big chunk of that is coming from the fact that it's overbraced, overbuilt. Um, we're gonna find out more when we cut the guitar open and we actually measure the top thickness. Um, but that's just been the main thing for me is I'm a little bit disappointed. I feel like Orangewood could do a better job of, uh, they're, I think they're being too cautious. Let's make this top a little bit thinner. Let's bring these braces down a little bit. And then this guitar probably would sound really, really good. Um, like I said, that's the acoustic sound. We're not gonna judge this guitar on how it sounds plugged in. It does come with a fantastic LR Bags Anthem dual source pickup system, and we, we haven't even plugged it in, but I guarantee you this thing probably sounds fantastic plugged in. So we're only gonna grade it on how it sounds acoustically. All right, the next thing we need to talk about for this guitar is what case does it come with? And this is our first one that we've done so far that actually comes with a hard shell case. Every guitar that we've done a breakdown review for up to this point has come with a soft shell case. And some of them were really great, some of them were not so great. And so we'll see how this one looks. Uh, out of the box, it's nice and black, has that kind of plasticky leather kind of is not definitely not real leather and has all this gold hardware on it and it even has a locking one um, but I do want to note that it's not a TSA lock which I always prefer to have on any sort of hard shell case because it just makes it easier to travel um, and these are just that kind of like lock for lock sake that you can use any key to get open. Um, it does have the Orangewood logo on it down here and I keep finding it funny that everything I see with Orangewood logo on it always either says like designed in Los Angeles or just Los Angeles. Uh, don't be fooled by that because <laughs> just like Apple does designed in California, uh, this is just designed in Los Angeles but all of the manufacturing is done in, in a Chinese factory and that's not a ding, it's just the fact that uh, they're trying to kind of convey this uh, a made in America thing but it's really not made in America, it's made in China. Uh, but let's see what the inside looks like on this. Let's see. So it's got this, uh, I don't know, would you say like a Merlot color, uh, a burgundy, if you will, uh, kind of a, a velvety material. And uh, I know that some cases that I've come across have like a really, uh, the hair on the, the uh, velvet is really uh, like a high pile. This is really low pile, which I kind of like because it doesn't get a lot of dust and dirt and sand and stuff stuck inside of it. So it's, you know, it's pretty nice. It's nothing crazy, pretty typical of what we'd see. And inside the case, we have just kind of your standard goodies that come along with it. Um, one thing that is really cool is that, I think this is more manufacturers should do this, it, they send it out the door with a pick guard that you can apply yourself. And that's cool because some people like pick guards and some people don't. And to have the option to apply it um, is, a, is, a, is a nice feature and I wish that more people would do that. Uh, and it could be a better quality pick guard. It's just a screen printed uh, tortoise shell pick guard. Nothing crazy there. Um, it has the owner's manual and all the tools that you will need for your pickup as well as, and I'm just noticing this, they throw in a spare um, bridge pin and something else I wish more guitar companies would do because inevitably you'll probably lose, lose one of those. Moving on to our lifestyle category, I'm gonna start off with our scratch resistance test. And we do this to help simulate the wear and tear that a guitar might receive over years of use. And we'll do this by rubbing a wad of keys and belt buckles against the guitar for 60 seconds, starting off with the front of the guitar. Now we'll do the back of the guitar. And 
And this guitar does have a thick polyurethane finish on it and received no scratches whatsoever with that test. Now we'll do our dent resistance test, and we do this by dropping a 1 inch carbide steel ball against the surface of the guitar to simulate those dents and dings that guitars tend to get over a lifetime of use. We'll do this by dropping it from a height of 18 inches against the top of the guitar. And uh, you can see here our very first time that we've had a guitar finish actually crack by doing this. We'll do the same thing now to the back of the guitar. And once again, a first here, where we actually had the wood crack as well. All right, now on to our liquid resistance test. And we do this to help simulate some of the fluids that a guitar's finish may encounter over years of use. A lot of us like to take our guitars outdoors and go camping or to the beach and things like that. So that's what this test is for. First, we're gonna apply bug spray. And then some suntan lotion. Then fresh water. Salt water, vodka, and then finally some beer. We're now going to let this sit overnight and see how that finish holds up to these different liquids. All right, the next morning we go about removing those by just wiping it down with some xylene, which gets rid of all the sugars and just content like that and leaves us with a nice clean finish. And uh, this finish was pretty bulletproof. The only thing that we saw was just a slight little bit of hazing where the bug spray was, but it was almost impossible to see on camera. So it held up really well. All right, moving on to our string tension resistance test. And we do this by stringing up the guitar with two different sets of strings and then seeing how much the guitar flexes. So we're going to start off with the Dario Light Gauge strings, and these actually have 160 pounds of string tension, and we are going to see how much that neck, body, and string height changes by putting on heavy gauge. So here's the Light Gauge strings that come in a string height at the 12th fret at 90 thousandths, which is pretty good. And then we're going to put this gauge on here, which is going to show us how much that belly rises up when we put the heavy gauges on there. So we just zeroed it out there. And now we're putting those heavy gauge strings on would have 212 pounds of tension, so quite a bit more. Okay, as you can see here, the neck only moved by three thousandths of an inch, which is really, really good. So you shouldn't have any issues by changing out different gauge strings. And then when we put the measurement on the 12th fret, it only went up by one one hundredth of an inch, which is not much. And the belly only increased by three thousandths of an inch. So basically those heavy gauge strings had no effect on the guitar whatsoever. All right, now to our stand failure resistance test. And we do this to simulate what might happen if this guitar is accidentally dropped on the ground. None of us want it to happen, but sometimes this does happen. Starting with the back of the guitar. It hit the ground real hard and I always cover my ears because it's just this, it's a horrible sound. And then we'll do the same thing to the front. And as you can see, all we got was just a little bit of finish damage here at the top of the headstock. And the front of the guitar received no damage whatsoever. And so it did pretty good. I think once again, it's beginning to illustrate that the finish on this guitar is pretty thick though. All right, now on to the heritage category. Starting off with trim and joinery. This guitar is really well appointed in the trim and joinery department and has all of that herringbone and plastic binding. And if you look really closely, all of the joints look really, really well done. They're well executed and, and that's really good for this price range. As far as the finish is concerned for this guitar, it is nicely applied and looks very good. But I had suspicions that it was actually too thick and that's part of the reason why the guitar didn't sound good so when we cut the guitar open we had some of the finish break off and you can see here that it's almost a full millimeter thick which is just ridiculous and not needed okay now to the fret quality on this guitar um you know nothing to note here other than the fact that they were properly installed we had no high frets and once again it was well set up and, and it played well 
All right, now to the interior build quality. And this is what makes these guitar breakdowns so special. What we like to do is cut all of the guitars open so that we can see if the inside is as well made as the outside of the guitar. And a lot of times we have a lot of surprises inside of these guitars and the orange wood is gonna be no different. Upon first glance, you can see that it looks really well constructed. The Ellerbach's pickup system is really well installed and looks really nice and tidy and should give you no issues. And the back, as always, looks really, really good. On most guitars, the backs look really, really great. But let's take a closer look. What you're going to see here is that a lot of the braces are really a poor quality of wood. Um, these two in particular are really horrible and they're what's called a riff sawn type of cut. And that is not going to allow for good energy transfer and is also going to leave it prone to cracking in the future. So we don't want to see that bad of a quality of wood used for braces ever. And you can see here we have a nice dovetail joint. And what I'm actually pointing to is how thick that finish is around the heel of the neck. All right, so we can see here that the bridge plate is a piece of maple, but it's a really poor quality piece of maple and there's lots of gaps around its perimeter, which is not gonna allow good energy transfer as well. And the other interesting thing is that these two braces right here are actually not torrified, whereas the rest of the braces are, which is just sloppy in my opinion. Now we're gonna remove that felt cap that covers up the X brace and see what that joint actually looks like. And you can see here that it wiggles and moves around a lot with just a little bit of pressure on it. And so that X joint is just really poorly made. And we'd like to see better construction than that. And all of these things add up to why this guitar doesn't sound that good. And so we also wanted to measure the thickness of the top uh, before we cut it open and you can see here that there's places where it gets all the way up to 3.7 millimeters thick Which is about in my opinion a full millimeter thicker than it should be So between those bad braces the thick braces and then the thick top I think that's why this guitar does not sound very good So all of our suspicions ended up being true on this guitar the top is too thick the Braces are too thick and the finish is too thick and all of those things combined dampens the sound of this instrument and makes it sound bad, which is disappointing because everything else about the guitar is really well executed. So we'd like to see it done with a little bit more purpose to make the guitar sound better in the future. All right, let's see how the orange wood stacks up against the competition. Starting off with the daily category. Okay, the features on this guitar, it is a well-appointed guitar, especially for the price range. It has all of that herringbone trim, the torrified top, really nice pickup system, so it gets an 8 out of 10. As far as playability, the guitar is one of the best playing guitars out of the box that we've had, so it gets a 9 out of 10. Like I said, the sound on the guitar was really bad, so it only gets a 4 out of 10. Now the case, it's a hard shell case, but it's not a very good hard shell case, so we're just going to give it a 5 out of 10. As far as the hardware is concerned, those Grover Tuner machines are nice, but they're not super great, so it gets a 5 out of 10 for a total of 31 points. Now in the lifestyle category. As you saw in the scratch resistance test, it held up flawlessly and we saw no scratches whatsoever, so it gets a 9 out of 10. On the liquid resistance test, it did very, very well, other than the slightest amount of blushing from the bug spray, so it gets a 9 out of 10. On the fall test, other than those small chips on the finish of the headstock, it had no actual structural damage, so it gets a 9 out of 10. When we did our string test, the guitar held up super good to that, so it gets a 9 out of 10. On the dent test, though, we did have some cracking of that finish, and that's because it's too thick, so it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total of 42 points. Now to the heritage category. Now the trim and joinery on this guitar is well executed and it gets a seven out of 10. As far as the finish is concerned, it looks nice, but it's way, way, way too thick. So it only gets a four out of 10. As far as the frets are concerned, they're well installed and they play really well. So it's gonna get a nine out of 10. Now the interior build quality on this guitar, we didn't have any major structure issues, but we did have poor cuts of wood and they were way too thick, so it's only gonna get a seven out of 10. As far as brand value, I don't know how much you can resell an orange wood for, so it only gets a five out of 10 for a total of 32 points. That brings the grand total to 105 points for this orange wood guitar, which actually beats out our Gibson G45 by 11 points. So this is our highest scoring guitar in the intermediate category so far. 
The one thing that we do want to note is we wish this guitar sounded a little bit better because other than that, it was a really wonderful guitar. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next one.